Uh, hello, everybody. We're back again, fellas, reading Scripture, Jasher, chapter 30, verse 1. And Jacob went forth, continuing his road to Haran. And he came as far as Mount Moriah. And he tarried there all night near the city of Uz. And the Lord appeared there unto Jacob on that night. And he said unto him, I am the Lord God of Abraham and the God of Isaac thy father. The land upon which thou liest I will give unto thee and thy seed. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee wherever thou goest. And I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. And I will cause all thine enemies to fall before thee. And when they shall make war with thee, they shall not prevail over thee. And I will bring thee again unto this land with joy, with children and great riches. And Jacob awoke from his sleep, and he rejoiced greatly at the vision which he had seen. And he called. shall make war with thee, they shall not prevail over thee. And I will bring thee again into this land with joy, with children, and with great riches. And Jacob awoke from his sleep, and he rejoiced greatly at the vision which he had seen. And he called the name of that place Bethel. And Jacob rose up from that place quite rejoiced. And when he walked, his feet felt light to him for joy. And he went from there to the land of the children of the east, and he returned to Haran, and he sat by the shepherd's well. And he there found some men going from Haran to feed their flocks. Jacob made inquiries of them, and they said, We are from Haran. Haran. And he said unto them, Do you know Laban, the son of Naor? And they said, We know him. And behold, his daughter Rachel is coming along to feed her flocks, her father's flock. Whilst he was yet speaking with them, Rachel, the daughter of Laban, came to feed her father's sheep, for she was a sheep shepherdess. And when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, he ran and kissed her and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was the son of Rebekah, his father's sister. And Rachel ran and told her father, and Jacob continued to cry because he had nothing with him to bring to the house of Laban. And when Laban heard that his sister's son Jacob had come, he ran and kissed him and embraced him, and brought him into the house and gave him bread, and he ate. And Jacob related, and Jacob related to Laban what his brother Esau had done to him, and what his son Eliphaz had done to him in the road. And Jacob resided in Laban's house for one month. And Jacob ate and drank in the house of Laban and after this is for one night. Oh. For one one night. I'm sorry. Let me start over. Jacob resided in Laban's house. Oh no no, one, no sorry, I was on the wrong page. I was on the wrong page. Okay. 
chapter 30, verse 12. And Jacob resided in Laban's house for one month. And Jacob ate and drank in the house of Laban. And afterward, Laban said unto Jacob, Tell me what shall be thy wages? For how canst thou serve me for naught? And Laban had no sons but only daughters. And his other wives and handmaids were still barren in those days. And these are the names of Laban's daughters, which his wife Adonai had borne unto him. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. And Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Tender-eyed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And Jacob loved her. And Jacob said to Laban, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban consented to this, and Jacob served Laban seven years for his daughter Rachel. And in the second year of Laban's dwelling in Haran, uh oh, and in the second year of Jacob's dwelling in Haran, that is in the 79th year of the life of Jacob, in that year died Eber, the son of Shem. He was 464 years old at his death. And when Jacob heard that Eber was dead, he grieved exceedingly and he lamented and mourned over him many years many days many days I'm sorry lamented. lamented and he lamented and mourned over him many days and in the third year of Jacob dwelling in Haran Bosmoth the daughter of Ishmael the wife of Esau bare him a son and Esau called his name Rule and in the fourth year of Jacob's residence in the house of Laban, the Lord visited Laban and remembered him on account of Jacob. And his sons were born unto him. And his firstborn was Beor. His second was Alibi, Alib, Alib. And the third was Korash, Chorash. And the Lord gave Laban Laban, riches and honor, sons and daughters, and the man increased greatly on account of Jacob. And Jacob in those days served Laban in all manner of work, in the house and in the field. And the blessings of the Lord was in all that belonged to Laban in the house and in the field. And in the fifth year died Jehoboth, Jehoboth the daughter of Berah, the wife of Esau in the land of Canaan. And she had no sons but daughters only. And these are the names of her daughters which she bare to Esau. The name of the elder was Marzeth, and the name of the younger was Puith, Puth, Puith, 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 and when Judea died, Esau ruled Jehudith. who? Jehudith. And when Jehudith died, Esau rose up and went to Sir to hunt in the field as usual. And Esau dwelt in the land of Sir for a long time. And in the sixth year, Esau took for a wife, in addition to his other wives. Alabama. Alabama. The daughter of Zebio, Zebio, the Hevite. And Esau brought her to the land of Canaan. And Aliabeth conceived and bare to Esau three sons. Juz, Juz, Yelan, and Korah. And in those days in the land of Canaan, there was a quarrel between the herdsmen of Esau and the herdsmen of the inhabitants of the land of Canaan. For Esau's cattle and goods were too abundant for him to remain in the land of Canaan. And his father's house and the land of Canaan could not bear him on account of his cattle. And when Esau saw that his quarreling increased with the inhabitants of the land of Canaan, he rose up and took his wives and his sons and his daughters and all belonging to him and the cattle which he possessed and all his property that he had acquired in the land of Canaan. And he went away from the inhabitants of the land to the land of Sir. And Esau and all belonging to him dwelt in the land of Sir. 
But from time to time, Esau would go and see his father and mother in the land of Canaan. And Esau intermarried with the Horites. And he gave his daughters to the sons of Sir, the Horite. And he gave his elder daughter, Marzeth, to Anah, the son of Zebion, his wife's brother. And Puits, Puits, he gave to Azar, the son of Bilhan, the Horite. And Esau dwelt in the mount, he and his children, and they were fruitful and multiplied. Anybody want to recap it? Or keep it moving? Keep it moving. All right, keep it moving. Chapter 31. <clears throat> and in the seventh year, Jacob's service, which he served Laban, was completed. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my woman, for the days of my service are fulfilled. And Laban, and Laban did so. And Laban and Jacob assembled all the people of that place, and they made a feast. And in the evening, the bond came to the house, and afterward Jacob came there with the people of the feast, and the bond extinguished all the lights that were there in the house. And Jacob said to the bond, Wherefore do you do this thing with two words? And the bond answered, Such as are accustomed to act in this land. And afterward, the bond took his daughter Leah, and he brought her to Jacob. And he came to her, and Jacob did not know that she was Leah. And Laban gave his daughter Leah his maid Zilpha for a handmaid. And all the people at the feast knew what Laban had done to Jacob. But they did not tell the thing to Jacob. And all the neighbors came to came that night to Jacob's house, and they ate and drank and rejoiced. And they played before Leah upon timbers and with dances. And they responded before Jacob, Ha, Aaliyah, Aaliyah. And it says, on here it says composing Hebrew words that Leah is she is Leah <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious that is crazy. I'm trying to tell him guess what Pa you got the wrong one. Oh man and Jacob mm -hmm. heard their words but did not understand their meaning but he thought such might be their custom in this land and he got a bear for the dog and the neighbors spoke these words before Jacob during the night. And all the lights that were in the house, the bond had the night extinguished. Oh my goodness. And in the morning, when the daylight appeared, Jacob turned to his woman and he saw, and behold, it was Leah that had been lying in his bosom. And Jacob said, Behold, now I know what the neighbors said last night. A leader, they said, and I knew it not. And Jacob said unto the bond, and said unto them, what is this that you did unto me? Surely I served you for Rachel, and why did you receive me, and did give me Leah? And Boaz answered, and Boaz answered Jacob, saying, Not so is it done in our place to get the younger before the elder. Now therefore, if you desire to take your sister likewise, take her unto you for the service which you will serve me another seven years. And Jacob did so, and he also took Rachel for a woman, and he served the bond seven years more. And he also came to Rachel, and he loved Rachel more than Leah. And the bond gave her gave her his maid, Bilha, for a handmaid. And when Yahweh saw that Leah was hated, Yahweh opened her womb, and she conceived and bore Jacob four sons in those days. And these are their names Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Yehuda. And she afterward left Baron. And at that time, Rachel was barren, and she had no offspring. And Rachel envied her sister Leah. And when Rachel saw that she bore no children to Jacob, she took her handmaid, built her, and she bore Jacob two sons, Dan and Naphtali. And Leah saw that she had left Baron. And she also took her handmaid, Zilpah, and she gave her to Jacob for a woman. And Jacob also came to Zilpha, and she also bore Jacob two sons, Gad and Asher. And Leah again conceived, and bore Jacob in those days two sons and one daughter, and these are their names, Issachar, 
Zebulun and their sister Dinah. And Rachel was still bearing in, in those days. And Rachel prayed unto Yahweh at that time, and she said, O oh, Yahweh, Elohim, remember me and visit me, I beseech you. For now my man will pass me off, for I have borne him no children. Now, Yahweh, Elohim, hear my supplication before you, and see my affliction, and give me children like one of the handmaids, that I may no more bear my reproach. And Elohim heard her over her womb, and Rachel conceived and bore a son, and she said, Yahweh has taken away my reproach, and she called his name Yosef, saying, May Yahweh add to me another son. And Jacob was ninety-one years old when she bore him. And at that time, Jacob's mother, Ripka, sent her nurse to bore with the daughter of Uts, and two of Isaac's servants unto Jacob. And they came to Jacob to Haran, and they said unto Ripka, and they said to him, Ripka has sent us to you, that you shall return to your father's house to the land of Canaan. And Jacob hearkened unto them in this which his mother had spoken. At that time, the other, <coughs> the other seven years with Jacob served the bond for which were completed. And it was at the end of fourteen years that he had built the bond. And Jacob said to the bond, Give me my woman and send me away, that, my, that I may go to my land. For behold, my mother did sin unto me. From the land of Canaan, that I should return to my father's house. And the bond said unto him, Not so, I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight. Do not leave me, or point me your wages, and I will give you, and remain with you. And Yahweh said unto him, This is what you shall give me for wages. That I shall this day pass through all your flock, and take away from them every lamb that is speckled and spotted, and such as are brown amongst the sheep and amongst the goats. And if you will do this thing for me, I will return and feed your flock and keep them as at first. And the bond did so. And the bond moved, removed from his flock all that Jacob had said and gave them to him. And Jacob placed all that he removed from the bond's flock in, in the hands of his sons. And Jacob was feeding the remainder of the bond's flock. And when the servants of, of Yitzhak, that's the way they say Isaac in this language, which he had sent unto Jacob, saw that Jacob would not then return with them to the land of Canaan to his father. They then went away from him and returned home to the land of Canaan. And the boy remained with Jacob and Haran. And she did not return with the servants of Yishak to the, to the land of Canaan. And the boy resided with Jacob's women and children of Haran. Jacob served the bond six years longer. And when the sheep brought forth, they could move from them such as respect and spotted. And he had determined, and he had determined for bond. And Jacob did so at the bonds for six years. And the man increased abundantly. And he had cattle and maid servants, and men servants, camels and asses. And Jacob had two hundred droves of cattle, and his cattle were of large size and of beautiful appearance, and were very productive. And all the families of the sons of men desired to get some of the cattle of Jacob, for they were exceedingly prosperous. And many of the sons of men came to procure some of Jacob's flock. And Jacob gave them a sheep for a man servant, or a maid servant, or for an ass, or a camel, or whatsoever Jacob desired from them they gave him. And Jacob obtained riches and honor and possessions by means of these transactions with the sons of men and the children of the bond, even them in this manner. And in this course of time, he heard the words of the bond's son, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's. And that that which was our father's, as he acquired all his glory, and Jacob beheld the countenance of the bond and of his children, and behold, it was not toward him in those days that he had been before. And how he appeared to Jacob at the expiration of the six years, and said unto him, Arise, go forth out of this land, and return to the land of your birthplace, and I will be with you. And Jacob rose up at that time, and he mounted his children and women, and, and all belonging to him, upon camels, and he went forth to go to the land of Canaan to his father and get shot. And the bond did not know that Jacob had gone for him, <coughs> for the bond being that day she did sheep shearing. And Rachel stole her father's images, and she took them and concealed them upon the animal, the camel, <laughs> upon which she sat. And she went on. And this and this is the manner of the images. And taking the man who was the firstborn and slain him. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, I'm sorry. Can you read that again slowly? What chapter is it? 
the verse? We on verse uh, 40. All right. And Rachel stole her father's images, and she took them, and she concealed them from the camel, upon which she sat, and she went on. And this is the manner of the images, and taking a man who is the firstborn, and slaying him, and taking the hair off his head, and taking salt, and salting the head, and anointing it in oil, and taking a small tablet of copper, or a tablet of gold, and writing, writing the name upon it, and placing the tablet under his tongue. And taking the head with the tablet under, under the tongue, and putting it in the house, and lighting up lights before it, and bowing down to it. And at the time when they bow down to it, it speaks to them in all matters that they ask of them, through the power of the name which is written in it. And some make them the figures of men, of gold and silver, and go to them in times known to them, and the figures receive the influence of the stars, and tell them future things, and in this manner were the images which Rachel stole from her father. And Rachel stole these images which were her father's, in order that Laban might not know through where Jacob had gone. And Laban came home, <laughs> and he asked the son of Jacob and his household, and he was not to be found. And Laban saw his images to know where Jacob had gone, and could not find them. And he went to some other images, and he acquired of them, and he told them that Jacob had fled from him to his fathers, to the land of Canaan. And Laban then rose up, and he took his brothers and all his servants, and he went forth and pursued Jacob, and he overtook him in Mount Gilead. And Laban said unto Jacob, What is this we have done to me to flee and deceive me, and led my daughters and their children as captive, taken by the sword? He did not suffer me to kiss them and send them away with joy. And he did steal my Elohim, and did go away. And Jacob answered the bond, saying, Because I was afraid that she would take their daughters by force from you. And now with whomsoever you find your Elohim, he shall die. And the bond searched for the images, and he examined all Jacob's tents and furniture, but could not find them. And the bond said to Jacob, We will cut a covenant together, and there shall be a testimony between me and you. If you shall afflict my daughters, or shall take other women besides my daughters, even Elohim shall be a witness between me and you in this matter. And they took stones and made a heap. And the bond said, This heap is a witness between me and you. Therefore he called the name thereof the lad. And Jacob and the bond offered sacrifice upon the mount, and they ate there by the heap, and they tarried in the mount all night. And the bond rose up early in the morning, and he went with his daughters, and he kissed them, and he returned to his place. And he hastened and sent off his son Beor, who was 17 years old, with Abikorov, the son of Uts, the son of Nahor. With them were 10 men. And they hastened and went and passed on the road before Jacob. And they came by another road to the land of Seir. And they came unto Esau and said unto him, Thus says your brother and relative, your mother's brother, the bond the son of Bethuel, saying, Have you heard what Jacob your brother has done unto me? He first came to me naked and bare, and I went to him, I went to meet him, and brought him to my house with honor, and I made him great, and I gave him my two daughters for women, and also two of my maids. Elohim blessed him on my account, and he increased abundantly, and had sons, daughters, and maids for us. He also and he has also an immense stock of flocks and herds camels and asses, also silver and gold in abundance. And he saw that his wealth increased. He left me while I went to share my sheep, and he rose up and fled to secrecy. And he lived with his woman and children upon camels, and he led away all his cattle and property which he acquired in my land. And he lifted up his countenance to go towards Yishak, to his father Yishak, to the land of Canaan. And he did not suffer me to kiss my daughters and their children, and he led my daughters at as captives taken by the sword. And he also stole my Elohim and fled. And now I have left him in the mountain of the brook of Yabak. Him and all belonging to him, he lacks nothing. If it be your wish to go to him, go then, and there will you find him. And you can do unto him as your soul desires. And the bonds and messengers came and took Esau all these things. He saw her all the words of Laban's messengers, and his anger was greatly kindled against him, and he remembered his hatred, and his anger burned within him. 
Esau hastened and took his children and servants and the souls of his household, being sixty men. And he went and assembled all the children of Seir, the Korah, and their people, being three hundred and forty men, and took all this number of four hundred men with drawn swords. And he went to uh, unto Jacob to smite him. And he saw the body his number into several parts. And he took the sixty of his sixty men of his children and servants and the souls of his household as one head, and gave them in the care of Aliphaz his eldest son. And the many heads he gave to the care of the six sons of Seir the Horite. And he placed every man over his generations of children. And the whole of this camp went as it was, and Esau went amongst them toward Jacob, and he conducted them with speed. And the bond's messengers departed from Esau and went to the land of Canaan, and they came to the house of Ripka, the mother of Jacob and Esau. And they told her, saying, Behold, the son Esau has gone against his brother Jacob with four hundred men, for he heard that he was coming. He is going to make, more, make war with them, and to smite him, and to, and to take all that he has. And Ripka hastened and sent seventy-two men from the service of Yeshak to meet Jacob on the road. But she said, Perchance Esau may make war in the road when he meets him. And these messengers went to, on the road to meet Jacob, and they met him in the road of the brook, on the opposite side of the brook, on the opposite side of the brook Yabak. And Jacob said, When he saw them, This camp is destined to me from Elohim. And Jacob called the name of this place Machnaim. And Jacob knew all his father's people, and he kissed them, and embraced them, and came with them. And Jacob asked them concerning his father and mother, and they said, They were will. And these messengers said unto Jacob, Because your mother has sent us to you, saying, I have heard my son, that your brother Esau has gone forth against you on the road with men from the children of Seir, the Korah. And therefore, my son, walk unto my voice and see with your counsel what you will do. And when he comes up to you, supplicate him, and do not speak rashly to him, and give him a present from what you possess, and from what Elohim has favored with you. And when he asks you concerning your affairs, conceal nothing from him. Perhaps he may turn from his anger against you. You could thereby save your soul, even all belonging to you. For it is your duty to honor him, for he is your elder brother. And when Jacob heard the words of his mother, which the messengers had spoken to Jacob, spoken to him, and knew that day. And when Jacob heard the words of his mother, which the messengers had spoken to him, Jacob lifted up his voice. <laughs> And wept bitterly, and did as his mother had been commanded. Yeah, that's kind of burn right there, right? You know what we do? We do it. We own it. Put it in there. Well. That was a little twist in the end. Oh, that was it. Okay. Hey, you can't, uh, Yeah, but she, yeah, but 
But after it was taken and he ran him down, he said, yo, you got my Elohim, you got my God, and you took off with my babies. Right. And Jacob was like, yo, no, this is why, man. Every time I tell you I'm leaving, you throw a pr proposition before me and look, I'm a good guy. So in order for me to do what I got to do for my family and my mother and father, I had to get go while you were sleeping. I didn't mean you no disrespect. And he said, hey, man, I get it. And because of this, let's make a heap to remember this day. Yes, he did. And, 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 and the Bible said, hey, it's squashed. It's squashed. It's squashed. Just do this for me. Mm -hmm. Don't marry no other women but my daughters, so they are honored. And I know they're taken care of by you. That's what he's saying, right? It is. That's what he did. That's what he did. That's what they did. They prayed on it, ate on it, and, and then uh, Levada rolled out. And when he got home or whatnot, he said, hey, oldest boy, right? Mm -hmm. Go Don't tell minutes. Esau what Jacob, what I'm about to tell you. And then right after, go to his mom, go to his mom. And tell, and tell Esau to say red. Wait a second. Who, who said tell his mom? That's what... Uh, on verse, on verse, on verse fifty-four, uh -huh. it's, uh, it says after um, I'm sorry, fifty-three. It says and Jacob and the bond offered sacrifices upon the mount, and they ate it there by the heap, and they tarried in the mount all night. And the bond rose up early in the morning, and he wept with his daughters, and he kissed them, and he returned to his place. Uh -huh. And he hastened and sent off his son Beor, who was seventeen years old, with Abikarath. The son of Uts, the son of Nahor, with them were ten men, and they hastened and went past on the road before Jacob, and they came to another road to the land of Seir, and they came to Esau, and they said, uh, "That's your brother and relative, your mother's brother Laban, the son of Bethel, saying, Have you heard whatever this, this, this?'" Uh -huh. And I'm gonna skip down to uh, to where he sends them to go to uh, Rebecca, and that's that's at verse sixty nine. And then it says, And Laban's messengers departed from Esau and went to the land of Canaan. And they came to the house of Ripley, the mother of Jacob and Esau. And they told her, saying, Behold, your, your son Esau has gone against his brother Jacob with 400 men. Now, what's this about? Yeah, this what kind of plot is this? It's interesting. This is an interesting plot. So he's sending Esau to go kill him. And he's also telling his mom, so she saw God. Yeah. Knowing mom's going to intervene. Is it's the bond trying to bring the family together in a weird kind of way? I mean, well, when they came to Jacob, Jacob said, This camp is destined to me from Al Hayyan, from God. And, and, and Jacob called God the name of that place, Machnaim. So when he saw the camp that his mom sent him, he was like, Hey, my peeps. So it's Kind of an interesting mix. Yeah, well, maybe when Roman finishes reading, we'll find the answer to what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. The Bible got a way of tying into each other. It does. So I, I was a. Uh, I want to point out too yeah. how, uh, sure. <laughs> how the women, uh, the sisters, started eating one another as well. Uh, Leah and Rachel. Yeah, how one was bad, one was in bed, and they started doing the same as that I thing. Know. The same as that thing that Sarah, that um, Abraham went through, right? And then uh, Isaac almost went through it, but his wife was more like then was like, nah, let me let me pray. And then they skipped Isaac, then went to Jacob. And then Jacob was going through what Abraham went through. Yeah, times now, Isaac two. didn't go for it though. Mm -hmm. That was Jacob's dad. Right. So you're saying Jacob is falling for the same move that mm -hmm. Abraham but times was, two. Double time. Well actually times comes uh, Four, because he had four. He got four, four women in this interest instead of two. <laughs> and those times two. But then Rachel was like, "Matter of fact, let me stop this. Let me just pray to the Creator." And she and she finally did so. But then also too, just throughout this whole thing, it was interesting how people listen to hear what somebody says to them and they take it for a fact. But to what Scripture says, anyone that hears a matter. And they uh, ain't like judge it already before uh -huh. searching the matter. It's a folly to them because it's leading them to go do things unbeknownst to them, and it's not even the case. People over here getting upset and mad over something that they heard, and it may not even be true. Hey, that's a good lesson. That's a good point, man. Don't get mad at your brother. 
because of some information someone's bringing you. Ask him yourself, because it may not be so. Mm -hmm. That's that is so true. I don't know. People are devious like that, man. Yeah. Man. Go ahead, Ron. Knock it out. All right. Chapter 32. And at that time, Jacob sent messengers to his brother Esau toward the land of Seir. And he spoke to him words of supplication. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall he say to my Lord, to Esau, Thus saith thy servant Jacob, let not my Lord imagine that my father's blessings with which he did bless me has proved beneficial to me. For I have been these tw 20 years with the bond and he deceived me and changed my wages 10 times as it has been already told unto my Lord. And I served him in his house very laboriously and God afterwards saw my affliction, my labor, and the work of my hands, and he caused me to find grace and favor in his sight. And I afterward, through God's great mercy and kindness, acquired oxen and asses and cattle and men servants and maid servants. And now I am coming to my land and home to my father and mother who are in the land of Canaan. And I have sent to let my Lord know all this in order to find favor in the sight of the Lord so that he may not imagine that I have of myself obtained wealth or that the blessings with which my father blessed me has benefited me. And those messengers went to Esau and found him on the borders of the land of Edom, going toward Jacob and 400 men of the children of Seir, the Horite, were standing with drawn swords. And the messenger of Jacob told Esau all the words that Jacob had spoken to them concerning Esau. And Esau answered them with pride and contempt and said unto them, Surely I have heard, and truly it has been told unto me what Jacob has done to Laban, who exalted him in his house and gave him his daughters for wives. And he begot sons and daughters and abundantly increased in wealth and riches in Laban's house through his means. And when he saw that his wealth was abundant and his riches great, he fled with all belongings to him from Laban's house, and he led Laban's daughters away from the face of their father as captives taken by the sword without telling him of it. And not only to Laban has Jacob done this thus, but also unto me has he done so, and has twice supplanted me, and shall I be silent? Now therefore, I have this day come with my camps to meet him, and I will do unto him according to the desire of my heart. <laughs> and the messengers returned and came to Jacob and said unto him, We came to thy brother, to Esau, and we told him all thy words. And thus he answered us, And behold, he cometh to meet thee with four hundred men. Now, then know and see what thou sh shalt do and pray before God to deliver thee from him. And when he heard the words of his brother, which he had spoken to the messengers of Jacob, Jacob was greatly afraid and he was distressed. Jacob prayed to the Lord, his God. He said, O Lord God of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, thou didst say unto me when I went away from my father's house saying, I am the Lord God, of thy father Abraham and the God of Isaac. Unto thee do I give this land and thy seed after thee. And I will make thy seed as the stars of heaven, and thou shalt spread forth to the four sides of heaven, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And thou didst establish thy words, and didst give unto me riches and children and cattle, and the utmost wishes of my heart didst thou give unto thy servant. Thou didst give unto me all that I asked from thee, so that I lack nothing. And thou didst afterwards say unto me, Return to thy parents and to thy birthplace, and I will still do well with thee. And now that I have come, and thou didst deliver me from the bond, I shall fall in the hands of Esau, who will slay me, ye together with the mothers of my children. Now, therefore, O Lord God, deliver me, I pray thee, also from the hands of my brother Esau, 
for I am greatly afraid of him. And if there is no righteousness in me, do it for the sake of Abraham and my father Isaac. For I know that through kindness and mercy have I acquired this wealth. Now, therefore, I beseech thee to deliver me this day with thy kindness and to answer me. And Jacob ceased praying to the Lord. He divided the people that were with him with the flocks and cattle into two camps. And he gave the half to the care of Dam Dam Damsek, the son of Eliezer, Abraham's servant, for a camp with his children. And the other half he gave to the care of his brother uh, El Elinus, the son of Ele Eliezer, to be for a camp with his children. And he commanded them, saying, Keep yourselves at a distance with your camps, and do not come too near each other. And if Esau come to one camp and, and slay it, the other camp at a distance from it will escape him. And Jacob tarried there that night, and during the whole night he gave his servants instructions concerning the forces and his children. And the Lord heard the prayer of Jacob on that day, and the Lord then delivered Jacob from the hands of his brother Esau. And the Lord sent three angels of the angels of heaven, and they went before Esau and came to him. And these angels appeared unto Esau and his brother as two thousand men riding upon horses furnished with all sorts of war instruments. And they appeared in the sight of Esau and all his men to be divided into four camps with four chiefs to them. And one camp went on and they found Esau coming with 400 men toward his brother Jacob. And this camp ran toward Esau and his people and terrified them. And Esau fell off the horse in alarm and all his men separated from him in that place for they were greatly afraid. And the whole of the camp shouted after them when they fled from Esau and all the warlike men answered saying, Surely we are the servants of Jacob, who is the servant of God, and who then can, can stand against us. And Esau said unto them, O oh then, my lord, and brother Jacob is your lord, and who, whom I have not seen for these twenty years. And now that I have this day come to see him, do you treat me in this manner? And the, answer, and the angels answered him, saying, As the Lord liveth, we are not Jacob, of whom thou speakest, thy brother. We had not let one remaining from thee and thy people, but only on account of Jacob we will do nothing to them. And this camp passed from Esau and his men, and it went away. And Esau and his men had gone from them about a league when the second camp came toward him with all sorts of weapons. And they also did unto Esau and his men as the first camp had done to them. And when they had left it to go on, behold the third camp came toward him and they all were and they they were all terrified. And Esau fell off the horse, and the whole camp cried out and said, Surely we are the servants of Jacob, who is the servant of God, and who can stand against us? And Esau again answered them, saying, O oh, then, Jacob, my lord, and your lord is my brother. And for twenty years I have not seen his countenance. And hearing this day that he was coming, I went this day to meet him. And do you treat me in this manner? And they answered him and said unto him, As the Lord liveth, we are not Jacob thy brother. As thou didst say, we had not left a remnant from them, from thee and thy men, on account of Jacob, of whom thou speakest, being thy brother, we would not meddle with thee or thy men. And the third camp also passed from them. And he still continued his road with his men toward Jacob. When the fourth camp came toward him, and they also did unto him and his men as the others had done. And when Esau beheld the evil which the four angels had done to him, and to his men, he became greatly afraid of his brother Jacob, and he went to meet him in peace. And Esau concealed his hatred against Jacob, because he was afraid of his life on account of his brother Jacob. And because he imagined that the four camps that he had lighted upon were Jacob's servants. And Jacob tarried that night with his servants in their camps, 
Then he resolved with his servants to give unto Esau a present from all that he had with him and from all his property. And Jacob rose up in the morning, he and his men, and they all chose from amongst the cattle a present for Esau. And this is the amount of the present which Jacob chose from his flock to give unto his brother Esau. And he selected 240 head from the flocks, and he selected from the camels and asses 30 each. And of the herds, he chose 50 kin. And he put them all in 10 droves, and he placed each sort by itself. And he delivered them into the hands of 10 of his servants, each drove by itself. And he commanded them and said unto them, keep yourselves at, at a distance from each other and put a space between the droves. And when Esau and those who are with you who are with him shall meet you and ask you, saying, Whose are you, and whither do you go, and to whom belongeth all this before you? You shall say unto them, We are the servants of Jacob, and we come to meet Esau in peace. And behold, Jacob cometh behind us. And that which is before us is a present sent from Jacob to his brother Esau. And if they shall say unto you, Why do, doth, why doth he delay behind you from coming to meet his brother? and to see his face. Then you shall say unto them, Surely he cometh joyfully behind us to meet his brother. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth to him. And after this, I will see his face. Preventure he will accept of me. So the whole present passed on in the hands of his servants and went before him on that day. And he lodged that night with his camps by the border of the brook of Jabuk. He rose up in the midst of the night, and he took his wives and his maidservants, and all belonging to him. And he that night passed them over the ford Jabuk. And when he passed all belonging to him over the brook, Jacob was left by himself. And a man met him, and he wrestled with him that night until the breaking of the day. In the hollow of Jacob's thigh, was out of joint through wrestling with him. Then at the break of, of day, the man left Jacob there and he blessed him and went away. And Jacob passed the brook at the break of day and he halted upon his thigh. And the sun rose up and the sun rose upon him when he had passed the brook. And he came up to the place of his cattle and children. And they went on till midday, and whilst they were going, the present was passing on before him. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau was at a distance, coming along with many men, about four hundred. And Jacob was greatly afraid of his brother. And Jacob passed in and divided his children unto his wives and his handmaids. And his daughter, Dina, he put in a chest and delivered her into the hands of his servants. And he passed before his children and wives to meet his brother, and he bowed down to the ground. Yeah, he bowed down seven times until he approached his brother. And God caused Jacob to find grace and favor in the sight of Esau and his men, for God had heard the prayer of Jacob. And the fear of Jacob and his terror fell upon his brother Esau, for Esau was greatly afraid of Jacob for what the angels of God had done to Esau, and Esau's anger against Jacob was turned into kindness. And when Esau saw Jacob running toward him, he also ran toward him and embraced him, and he fell upon his neck, and they kissed, and they wept. And God put fear and kindness toward Jacob in the hearts of the men that came with Esau, and they also kissed Jacob and embraced him. And also Eliphaz, the son of Esau, with his four brothers, sons of Esau, wept with Jacob, and they kissed him and embraced him, for the fear of Jacob had fallen upon them all. And Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the women with their offspring, the children of Jacob walking behind Jacob and bowing along the road to Esau. And Esau said unto Jacob, Who are these with thee, my brother? Are they thy children or thy servants? And Jacob answered Esau and said, They are my children, which God has graciously given to thy servant. And whilst Jacob was speaking to Esau and his men, Esau beheld the whole camp, and he said unto Jacob, Whence didst thou get the whole 
of the camp that I met yesterday. And Jacob said, To find favor in the sight of my Lord, it is that which God graciously gave to thy servant. And the present came before Esau, and Jacob pressed Esau, saying, Take, I pray thee, the present that I have brought to my Lord. Esau said, And Esau said, Wherefore is this my purpose? Keep that which thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, It is incumbent upon me to give all this, since I have seen thy face, that thou still livest in peace. And Esau refused to take the present. And Jacob said unto him, I beseech thee, my Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand, for I have therefore seen thy face, as though I had seen a godlike face, because thou wast pleased with me. And Esau took the present, and Jacob also gave unto Esau silver and gold and pedilum, for he pressed him so much that he took them. And Esau divided the cattle that were in the camp, and he gave the half of the men who had come with him, for they had come on higher, and the other half he delivered unto the hands of his children. And the silver and gold and pedilum he gave in the hands of Eliphaz, his oldest son. And Esau said unto Jacob, Let us remain with thee, and we will go slowly along with thee until thou comest to my place with me that we may dwell there together. And Jacob answered his brethren and said, I will do as my Lord speaketh unto me. But my Lord knoweth that the children are tender and the flocks and herds with their young who are with me. But go slowly, go but slowly, for if they went swiftly, they would all die, for thou knowest their burdens and their fatigue. Therefore, let my Lord pass on before his servant, and I will go on slowly for the sake of the children and the flock until I come to my Lord's place this year. And Esau said unto Jacob, I will place with thee some of the people that are with me to take care of thee in the road and to bear thy fatigue and burden. And he said, What needeth it, my Lord, if I may find grace in thy sight? Behold, I will Come unto thee to Seir, to dwell there together, as thou hast spoken. Go thou then with thy people, for I will follow thee. And Jacob said this to Esau in order to remove Esau and his men from him, so that Jacob might afterward go to Canaan, go to his father's house to the land of Canaan. And Esau hearkened to the voice of Jacob, and Esau returned with the 400 men that were with him on their road to Seir. And Jacob and all belonging to him went that day as far as the extremity of the land of Canaan in its borders, and he remained there some time. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. That's a lot in that. Oh yeah. yeah, for sure. I'm gonna throw in uh, what I thought was really impactful was um, how the Lord said, like, well, first off, um, Jacob was praying, saying, like, you know, I'm terrified of, of Esau, like, help, pretty much, and Lord obviously helped him by sending those three angels to um, really change the way Esau was thinking about the whole situation. But I thought it was really interesting how those three angels appeared as like, how many men they said? 2,000. 2,000. Yeah. So I mean, it kind of, it made me think of how, you know, how Satan turned into like yeah. that brook. Mm -hmm. And also like the angels can turn into multiple things as well and it's just like really interesting like it made me think about like my own personal life like how many situations have i been in where it wasn't even nobody it was just straight angels or straight satan <laughs> you, never, you never know how god puts puts things in place for you that's the truth you got god working for you right 
You don't have to worry about nothing. Nothing at all. This, this worry yeah. about money and food, that's... That's part of the trap. I, I that's think that's a trap, trap because look what God will do. The yeah, I, yeah, obviously all the freaking... Well, yeah. obviously all the prophets are very profitable monetarily. Like, they don't worry about that at all. At all. And Jacob still at don't all. even know... They what came, God did. They came naked and bare. They said right. they came with nothing. 